The most sacred principle for astrophysicists is the idea that we aren't special in any regard, that our universe is everywhere as it is around us, on average. Yet, evidence is piling up that we do live in a special place. In particular, we seem to live in a giant hole, an under-density. This idea used to be somewhat of a fringe view because it would be in conflict with the currently most widely accepted theory for our universe. But the evidence isn't going away. Is this maybe the key to finally make sense of the universe? Let's have a look. Galaxy counts have shown that around us, out to about a billion light years away, there are about 20% fewer galaxies than farther out. A second study found roughly the same. Another one looked at galaxy clusters and also found this under density around us. But the measurement errors in these observations are quite large, so the statistical significance of this lingers at barely three sigma. If this was psychology, three sigma would be worth a TED talk to best-selling books and a mandatory awareness program, but in physics, three sigma isn't much. It's about a three in a thousand chance that it's just a measurement artifact, a coincidence from the sampling maybe. But still, it's not nothing. So why have astrophysicists pretty much ignored this? It's because if it were real, if the density around us really was 20% below average, that'd be really, really hard to explain in the current standard model of cosmology. When I refer to the standard model of cosmology, I mean the one with dark matter and dark energy, also known as lambda CDM. In this model, you can ask, what's the probability of this happening just by chance that we'd find ourselves in such a hole in the universe? One paper has put the chance below half a percent, another one at less than one time in 10,000, and yet another one said it'd be a six sigma deviation from standard cosmology. Six sigma! At this significance, psychologists would start a new religion. You see, accepting that we live in a void would require more of a deviation from standard cosmology than just believing the measurements are all a little off. This is why astrophysicists have mostly ignored this. The authors of the new paper now ask how this underdensity, this whole idea, would fit together with a completely different sort of observation, the baryon acoustic oscillations. Baryon acoustic oscillations are density waves, like sound waves, that rippled through the plasma in the early universe. They then become frozen in and leave an imprint in the distribution of matter. This matter goes on later to form galaxies and galaxy clusters. So the matter that we see around us today was seeded by the density distribution that had an imprint from the baryon acoustic oscillations. These density patterns are, however, affected by how the universe expands. And that expansion happens differently in an underdense region. That is, you can use the baryon acoustic oscillations to infer the local expansion rate. In the new paper, the authors do a pretty straightforward analysis of baryon acoustic oscillations in various datasets. They just ask, what scenario fits better to the data? The standard cosmological model or that we live in a hole? They find that the standard cosmological lambda CDM model has a 3.3 sigma mismatch with the data. But if they assume that we find ourselves in a hole in the universe, the tension goes down to about 1 sigma. That's basically no tension. They do not, in this paper, combine this analysis with the earlier findings from galaxy counts and galaxy clusters. However, I'd expect that if one were to do this, the significance would go up, possibly into the range of four sigma or so. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. I give this a low reading on my bullshit meter. I can't really tell if the analysis was properly done, but if correct, I think it's a very important result. If we live in a hole in an underdense region, that affects the way we need to analyze all cosmological data. It would basically mean that we've tried to explain our observations the wrong way for decades and that the standard cosmological model needs to be abandoned. So maybe we live in a giant cosmic hole, or maybe other galaxies just don't like us. 
Maybe you've noticed that I've recently begun doing shorts. If you've been thinking about doing this too, I have a recommendation for you starter pack because I finally found a microphone that I'm super happy with. It's a wireless mic from Holyland called the Lark A1. I think it's the best low cost clip on mic on the market right now and it clips on with a magnet. So convenient. You can hear for yourself that it's great audio quality, but let me give you some more details. For a microphone that small, the audio quality is absolutely remarkable. The frequency response is amazing and the noise bottom is very low. It also has a built-in noise reduction that you can turn up or down as you need it. The battery lifetime is a remarkable 54 hours. Yes, you can get cheaper microphones, but not at this quality. That's the reason why 20 million professionals trust Holyland. They deliver great value for the price and you don't need any complicated setup. I literally got the delivery, plugged it into my phone and started recording. So if you're looking for a low cost, high quality mic to get started on your YouTube career, look no further. Check out the Hollyland Lark A1, which starts at just about $50. Links in the info below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.